Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day to meet with us. Um, just want to make a note real quick. Um, this recording is being, re this, this video is being recorded. Um, just want to make that clear. We, we will use it to post um, for folks later if they're unable to attend this presentation. So just be aware it's recorded. And there may be a couple of people joining in a little late, but I'm going to get started. So first, thanks again for coming today. Um, we know it's your lunch hour and everyone's busy. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about the three programs we have here. And I usually like to start with stating our mission statement and our vision statement. The mission statement basically states our objectives and our approach to reach these goals or these objectives we set. Um, and that for the Rady School is the Rady School of Management advances business by generating meaningful research and educating principled innovative leaders. Our vision statement is what we hope to see you know, ourselves in or what we hope for ourselves in the future. Um, and the Rady School of Management's vision statement is that we will contribute to a more equitable, knowledgeable, and prosperous society. Um, we take these actually very seriously. Um, having, you know, bringing business and, and using it as a tool to benefit society in one way, shape, or form is very important to us. Many of our graduates do go on to do this. By all means, this is not a, a mandate, but it is something that we like to encourage. So let's get started. A couple introductions. Um, my name is Christina Cook. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions here at Rady. And I work primarily with the Flex MBA programs, but I have extensive experience working with full-time programs as, as well. So we'll be covering all three. This presentation will last approximately 45 minutes. Um, we may have we may, maybe 45 minutes to an hour with time for questions and answers at the end. Um, if you do have questions, please submit them via the chat function of your Zoom um, option. Um, Gerard or Amy, who are my colleagues, will be um, answering them as we go forward. And we can also address any unanswered questions in the Q&A at the end. Um, and if you're already interested, if I've already sold you on this, but by all means, please email me and we can set up an appointment. Uh, my email address is kbcook at ucsd.edu. We will have this available at the end of the presentation as well. So, ah, okay. So first we're gonna talk about, you know, just give you a rundown of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'd like to address the uh, philosophy of what we do here at Rady and, and how we approach graduate business education. Um, talk a little bit about our STEM designation. I will cover the, the three um, programs, just a general overview of each. Um, the curriculum and the program formats, the admissions requirements and our process, and then financing your, your program. So let's get started here. So at Rady, what we do here um, is we really try in, in not only just our students, but our staff, our faculty, our administration, we're focused on adding positive value to our communities and our constituents. Um, it's important to understand these these values of Rady because we really work hard to uphold them and we, we hope that our students in the end will also do so when they leave. Um, becoming a stronger, more innovative leader upon completing an MBA program is a worthy goal and we hope to shape our students to become ethical, principled, and innovative leaders upon graduation. Um, and this is our hope for all of the students that come and join us you know, through their two years of their education. Um, what we do also is we, we have more of a scientific approach to business. In fact, we like to think of Rady teaches the science of business. Um, our students learn to create hypotheses and to test them. And our faculty educate students how to make decisions that are vetted, they're grounded, and they're proven to enhance the, the growth of the organization or company that they are working with. But equally important, our students leave, an under, leave understanding the value of diverse thought, collaboration, harnessing ideas from various sources. Um, and we like to think of, you know, what we do in, in terms of discoveries that are brought to the market, new innovations that are launched, new service models that are established. Um, we really just like to help others drive positive change. So um, as you can see in the, this, this how we teach, Grady is STEM designated, um, which requires us in, in just 
the mere fact that we do take a more analytical approach to how we teach these classes. They're going to be a little bit more technical than other MBA programs. Um, at the same time, we work together. It's a very collaborative environment. Our faculty are at your service. Um, and they really are sort of the drivers of, of the program. They always will be. Okay. So getting on to our STEM designation. And so for those of you that are not aware, STEM designation is basically uh, a designation that is given to graduate business programs um, that implies that they are teaching a certain level of science, technology, and, and technology, engineering, and math. Um, so it's not only what we teach, but how we teach it and the, how we teach the skills for students to, to take with them. So in order to obtain this designation, we must include an emphasis in management science, data and analysis, forecasting, dynamic modeling, and research techniques to analyze the problems that we find in businesses. And I mentioned that earlier, that we teach a scientific approach to, to um, examining business problems. Um, and so this is kind of what we do. We, um, we include the design and the testing of prototype systems to, just to make sure that we're doing the right thing and making the right decision. So it's a slightly different approach. It's not, here's the answer. This is how you get to the answer. Um, you know, with the scientific kind of approach, we're looking at different hypotheses. We're listening to different voices and different, you know, um, belief systems and coming up with the, the best answer with the information available to us at that time. And a perfect example of this um, is a business valuation. These, this, this sort of hypothesis-based education and learning is very common in the regular business environment. Um, so business valuation is what all VCs do in order to determine the, determine the value of a startup. It's also what small companies do if they're looking to sell their company. They wanna understand, you know, what is the value of this? Um, what is the value of these intangibles? Um, and there, in order to do this properly, three different methods need to be um, completed in terms of discovering the value. And yes, it takes more time to do that, but that is why you do so, because you, you ultimately you know, understand the real value by looking at three different approaches. Um, so it does take time, but you come out with a tremendous amount of confidence that you have the right approach and you have the right value. Other areas where this is applied, um, market research, obviously, heavily data-oriented, looking at different focus groups, looking at just pure numbers um, and understanding how they all fit together, understanding how mergers and acquisitions actually, um, how, they, how they amount to the dollars that they say they're going to, to raise and, and bring. For example, um, they call them synergies. And if two large pharmaceutical companies merge, their goal is to raise the shareholder price. And that is how they, you know, that is their mandate by their stockholders. And so in order to understand whether or not a merger is actually going to be worthwhile, they take the same sort of approach where they look at various methods. I mean, again, the supply chain optimization is another um, commonly used practice. So again, just talking a little bit about what we focus on, the management um, science, by forecasting data analysts, um, research techniques, very similar to, you know, those of you that are in science should probably recognize some of this from your undergraduate education. Um, yeah, and so one thing I want to also say is that Rady is one of the few MBA programs in Southern California where all three of the programs are STEM designated. Um, some, some schools will have maybe one program and it may not even be the MBA program. It might be like a different offshoot, like a management of science. And students can take those classes that are STEM designated within that program, but they're not really part of the MBA program. So it's a testament to, to, um, to what UCSD stands for and what Rady stands for is that we were able to obtain this designation. Um, very easily and very quickly because of what we've been doing and we've been doing it well for a very long time. Um, and the other, the other part actually is for those without a technical background, it may seem intimidating, but it's actually, you can turn the tables a little bit and look at it as, as a really wonderful balance to let's say a less technical undergraduate degree or career you know, um, field. 
because if you're able to walk both sides of the brain, if you will, um, you really have it covered. And so if you have a history degree or something along those lines, being able to leave, spend two years and leave with a STEM designated MBA, let alone an MBA, you really are designating, your, you know, and, and demonstrating to others that yes, not only can you understand the qualitative side of things, but you really can understand all of the quantitative side as well. So with that said, let's talk about the three different programs and the overview. So at Rady, we have two different options for individuals. We have the full-time option, and then we have the flex MBA option. Within the flex option, there are two different time periods that work and two different profiles. Um, so the flex evening, actually I'll start with the full-time. The full-time is what you traditionally think of when you think of an MBA, where people literally will quit their job, they come to school, they attend class all day, it's very intensive. Your life is the get, getting your degree. It's very much about meeting with your classmates after class and you know, heavily focused, your, your world revolves around that degree. Um, it's a two-year program with a summer in between where, where students typically try to obtain an internship or some sort of work experience in the field that they want to enter. Um, after that, they come back and they finish the program. So it's essentially a two-year program with a summer in between. The flex programs are slightly different. They are designed for the working professional. And um, why, why we have two is because not everyone can fit the same schedule. So the flex evening um, meets twice a week, typically Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 9.30. It is a 10 quarter program or essentially it works out to be a, about two and a half years. It's a slightly slower pace than the full time and the weekend. Uh, mainly because you're taking two classes a quarter for the, for the entire first year. After that first year, you can take more classes. In fact, you actually will need to take some quarters with, with three classes in order to get out in 10 quarters. Um, but it's a nice approach for those that don't want to be completely overwhelmed by you know, a full-time job and taking a full load of classes because it is considered part-time. Um, the profile of the week or the flex evening is a little bit different than the flex weekend. And that basically, the profile in, in, let's put it this way, the average age is a little bit younger and um, the average number of years of experience is about seven and a half when you average everybody together. We require at least three years of professional work experience upon graduation. Um, and it, you know, that starts at three years, it goes up to 25. So there's all sorts of people with various backgrounds and various levels of experience in that program. Um, the alternative flex program is the flex weekend program. That is uh, actually considered a full-time program. You're taking three classes a quarter, which is basically 12 units. Um, it meets in basically every other weekend. So Saturday and Sunday, full days, but every other Saturday and Sunday, you start by taking three classes a quarter and you continue taking three classes a quarter until you are complete, which you are finished in 24 months or you know, eight quarters without a summer break. So you'll take classes through the summer. Um, the profile for the weekend is slightly different. It, we consider it more of our executive style um, MBA because the minimum number of years of experience we require for admittance is eight. Um, so the average, you know, the average um, amount of experience for the class is about 13 and a half. And so if that's not where you are right now, the flex off, the flex evening is a great option for you. Or if you're really looking to um, stop what you're doing, take a pause, spend two years of your life just focusing on school, the full time is an option for you. The one thing that's very, that actually there's a couple of things that are exactly the same amongst three of them. We each require, they each require 92 units. They are the exact same requirement for all programs. Um, there is not a designation on anyone's diploma or transcript that says you were in an evening or a weekend or a full time. It just says an MBA. Um, you take the exact same core curriculum and generally you have the exact same professors teaching you. Um, likewise, you have access to all of the electives that are, that are, that are taught at Rady. Um, and the best part about it is that um, once that first year of the core curriculum is completed for each of the, you know, the three programs, those students can take classes whenever they want. So if they started in the weekend 
and they got tired of taking classes on Saturdays and Sundays. Once they're done with the core curriculum, which is basically the first year, they can start taking classes in the evening with you know, some of the evening students. They could take classes at two in the afternoon if their schedule permits with the full-time students. Um, likewise, that is the same for all of the students, all of the programs. It's a great way to network and meet other people on campus as well as to kind of spice up a little bit of your schedule if you have that availability. Um, for those that are in the weekend program, a lot of times they find themselves wanting to come to campus in the evenings throughout the week, just because that's when many clubs meet, there's, there's networking seminars, career management, um, info sessions and things of that ilk. So that's just sort of the, the, the general overview of the three programs. The important thing to note is they're all STEM designated. We require the exact same um, classes and core curriculum from each, and we all require 92 units to graduate. Moving on. So we talked a lot about core curriculum. You're, you know, for those of you that are new to this, probably don't know what I'm talking about. Um, the core curriculum is a set of classes that is standard um, for all MBA programs, and it's very similar at MBA programs outside of Brady as well. Students are um, will spend their first year taking a found foundational classes in every functional area within an organization, such as, you know, managerial economics, quantitative analysis, finance, accounting, marketing, strategy, leadership, things of that. So you'll cover every topic. You will not become an expert in any of them, but though that year not only serves as, um, you know, the, all of those prerequisites that you need to take electives, but it also um, inform students as to where they want to go next. Oftentimes people will come to the program thinking they want to go into a field, say marketing, and realize, you know, I'm really digging this finance stuff. I think, I, I think I'm going to start, take some more electives in finance. And so that's the beauty of it. You have a whole year to determine that. And that's the case with all three programs. Um, there is no choice. One, I, one thing I should say is there is no choice in what you take that first year. You, you take these classes in a very defined sequence in a lockstep fashion. And the beauty of that is you really get to know your classmates. You will be put into a study group. That study group becomes your lifeline because life happens and um, we all need help along the way. And those study groups are diverse, which is great because people have different skill sets. So that's, those, that is our core curriculum. The one class that is not offered in the first year is the lab to market, which is down here. That is a sequence of three classes that takes place in the second year. And I will discuss that briefly, but it is a required capstone experience. And that's the only class that's required in the second year. Okay, so what is this lab to market? Talk about it. My slide will move forward. Okay, so the lab to market again, as I mentioned, it's a sequence of three courses held over three quarters. And the whole concept is to teach students how to vet an idea. Um, I like to think of it as a sort of a mini entrepreneurial track, um, yet it's actually required here. It's not an option as it is in some other programs. Um, the reason why we want to offer this to our, can our students is number one, we are a program of innovation. We do have a very entrepreneurial spirit, not only in the foundation of Rady, but many of the students that come to Rady um, are of that same mindset. And the, the, it's the important part about understanding how to launch either a new business idea, a service line, or maybe even a service. Um, the important part is whether you do that on your own, let's say you are gonna become an entrepreneur, um, you wanna know the exact steps that you need to take in order to be sure that you have a feasible idea. So you're, you're not investing money, time, resources in an idea that's probably, you know, that hasn't been clearly researched and has a high chance of failure. So even if you were to do this on your own, it is still very valuable for individuals working within an organization, because as we've all learned, particularly this last year and a half to two years, that companies that survive are the ones that are changing dramatically and rapidly. It is here to stay. Change is the new norm. Companies will be constantly changing things in order to stay current with the market and, and meet the demands of our consumers. And so to understand how to you know, start with an idea and turn it into reality is very useful, even if you're in an organization and you have absolutely no desire to start your own company. Um, and you know, the, the part about um, you know, 
if you are actually interested in starting your own company, um, you can be, um, you can take some solace in that we actually, Rady students have actually done this very, very well. Um, we've, Rady graduates have started over 200 companies in the last 20 years. Um, six of the alumni have um, founded companies that went public. Some of the names, as you can see, are on the slide at the very bottom. Um, you know, and some of those companies that didn't go public, there's, they may not be still going concerns, but they were at one point. And so what I'm saying is that we really know what we're doing here, and we will teach you how to create an idea and turn it into reality, or at least to know when it's time to, to let it go. Um, a little bit more about Lab to Market. You can see a little bit about the, the kind of the statistics that we have here. Um, this is a little bit, you know, 186. We actually have over 200 now. Um, you know, we have a high ranking for entrepreneurship. It's not something we even wanted to be ranked for. And we've, actually this year it was even higher. Um, we've raised, these alumni have raised over $2 billion for these companies in the last 10 years. Um, so that's just sort of precedent to say, yeah, we know what we're doing here. You don't have to be part of it. You don't have to start your own business, but you know, you will know how to take an idea and turn it into reality. Um, and you will not miss a step along that process. However, if you're just, I somehow I went backwards. If that's really not what you want to do and you have absolutely no interest in, in doing you know, something along those lines, um, we do have industry sponsored projects. Um, this is kind of an alternative to the lab to market. And essentially, you, students would still be working in groups, but they would be working as a consultant with a local organization that comes to Rady and asks for our student assistance. So they actually, you know, you know less lack of a better word, they hire our students. Students will work with them to find the scope of the project and um, assist with their needs throughout those three, those three quarters. Um, some of the recent ones that we have done in the last couple of years, um, we had a biotech approach us for a growth strategy for, for a small CRO. Um, we had a climate or oriented one. Um, it was a strategic plan for a new organic line of produce telecommunications, e-commerce, um, aerospace, we developed a market strategy for a new client segment for our company. So as you can see, a lot of these projects are similar to you know, launching something new or trying to go into a new market. So either way, you're still gonna be focused, either way, if you do the lab to market or you do the industry project, you will be focused on bringing something from, from an idea into more of a reality. Um, and that's that's what we want you to understand because that's what happens in business on a daily basis. Um, and you know, if this is really what you want, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad way to add a you know larger name company to your resume. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the MBA curriculum, and then basically these are the electives. So I was not able to, of course, add all of the electives that um, we have available, but I did highlight some of the ones that are very popular. Um, you know, some, as you can see, a lot of these involve innovation, new thinking, um, you know, sometimes with a little bit of risk taking, um, everything sort of in the general direction of moving forward and being future minded. Um, one of the favorites is negotiation, which of course is useful for everybody. That's actually a two credit class that's offered um, at different points um, like within the winter. Regulation and innovation, um, CEO, the board of directors and gov corporate governance, um, biotech industry structure and strategy. These are all obviously very attuned to health sciences and those that are in, um, you know, in that biotech space. With that said, however, many of these classes, for example, the CEO, the board of directors and corporate governance, that's hugely under, hugely, you know, important in understanding how organizations interface with their communities, which is often oftentimes the government, and understanding who's really, you know, who else is making decisions at the top? Is it just the CEO? Or are there other constituents that need to be, um, you know, need to be addressed and, and included? That would be the board of directors. This is not something that's, that's um, taught very often in business schools, but it's vastly important because every single public company has a board of directors. Um, and then you can see some of the standards, you know, consumer behavior, um, project management, change management. Um, these are classes you probably find in other MBA programs, but 
What we do here is again, we teach from the scientific kind of method. We are STEM based, they're gonna be slightly more analytical. And in that, you know, in that way, we, we think they're better. Um, we also have classes that are um, that are not here, but they they are under a general title of topics in management or topics in finance. And essentially that is a an opportunity or a shell class that exists for our faculty to create new um, classes really quickly and get them into the registration you know, section. So students can take them without having to wait for everything to be approved. For example, um, just this last spring, we had a course, it was Management 449, Lessons Learned from COVID, and it's the crisis in supply chain. Um, that was created very quickly, obviously, and it was taught. And, and so when you do look at our catalogs, you'll see these topics in, and they're really useful um, tools to be able to offer new and exciting classes for our students. So we're not just stuck offering the same things every year. Our faculty are constantly innovating, constantly researching, constantly creating new content that's relevant for our students and for people that are looking to go and move forward with their businesses. Um, next, we're going to talk about what this really looks like. Um, so a lot of students will ask, well, OK, I understand this 10 quarter thing or this eight quarter thing, what does it feel like? What does it look like? So this is what we're gonna talk about. So this is the first one we're looking at is the flex evening plan of study. And this is for the most recent class, but they're essentially, you know, this is a sample plan of study, but it's essentially the same. So you can see in the fall quarter, we actually have three classes. Um, one thing to note that's very important for the evening class is the, 406 leadership and values and team management that's actually offered during orientation and um, we have a week-long orientation for the evening MBA candidates prior to school starting um, and so it's an intensive class but it's a great way to start off and, and meet your colleagues and become close with them right off the bat so in essence you during the actual period of the real UCSD quarter you're really only taking two classes at that time and you can see that throughout the first whole year, you know, fall all the way through the next fall, the end of the summer, you're taking two classes a quarter. It's in the second year and then the part of the third year where you actually can take additional units. Um, and you will need to do that in order to graduate in 10 quarters is to take a few, um, a few quarters with additional classes. Again, I noted before that we have a negotiations class, it's two credits. We have a few of those where you can also fit them in to, to meet those credit requirements. Um, but you can also see that lab to market does stretch over um, the three, three different quarters and then they're supplemented with other electives that are of interest to you. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. It certainly doesn't need to be exactly like this beyond the, the first year. For instance, you could, like, again, you could take 12 units at any time. You could actually speed up your graduation if you wanted to, if you wanted to really, you know, load the, the second year with all 12 credit, you know, qu quarters. You could do that as well. Um, so that's kind of how what the evening plays out. Most students come in thinking that they're going to really speed it up and then they realize, you know, this pace isn't so bad. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stick with the ten course. We actually have a we have a, a full time MBA with us today, and that's Amy. She will be available to answer questions at the end as well. She is one of our amazing staff members that works with me, and um, she's going into her second year, so she'll have some unique insight into what that really feels like. Oh yeah, um, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I thought I thought she was a flex evening, um, but yes, she's one of our amazing um, MBA students who will be able to really tell you the way it is. You know, she's um, gonna tell you what it's like. She's in those classes all last year. She did them all in Zoom. And this year she's returning to real life classes just as all of our new students are. Okay, so for the next one, the Flex Weekend, um, I mentioned earlier that it is a 24, uh, 24 um, month program or, or eight quarters. Um, and the pace is a little bit quicker. You're taking 12 units all the way throughout. It's pretty cut and dry. You know, you take classes every Saturday and Sunday, more or less from like 8 to 5.30, you know, somewhere in there. It's a full day. Um, in the second year for the weekend students, they likely will need to come to campus in one of the e weekday evenings for the lab to market. Um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but in that lab to market class, 
not only are you with your own class, so let's say you're in the evening, not only are you gonna be entering the lab to market workshop with your own colleagues, but you will be there with the weekend and the full time. And so all of the MBA students that enter at a particular fall will be together. And that's another great way to um, network and get to meet other students. And you'll be working on teams with students from different programs. And because of that, in order to make it, you know, to, to meet everyone's, to make it, most people can um, can agree to come to campus on the weeknight. So that's just something to be aware of. If you are on the weekend program, you will be asked more than likely than not to have, you know, do the lab to market workshop number one. So the very first one will probably be offered in the weekday night. Um, it ends up that most of the time these folks on the weekend really do want to come in the evening just because they want to be around as I mentioned before, for some of the clubs and some of the other events. Um, and also they, you know, a lot of times they want to meet other candidates. They want to meet other students. So that's just something to be, you know, to be aware of. The, the second two lab to market um, workshops, um, right now they are being held much more on an independent study basis. So you'd be meeting much more often with your team on your own time um, than in a regular classroom setting. Um, the first one, however, is a traditional classroom setting. And that's where you learn all the skills and you learn how to apply these, these processes and practices that, that are going to enable you to determine whether that idea that you're working on is feasible. And then lastly, we're going to move on to the full-time. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, the full-time program is the most intense um, academically because you're taking 16 to 17 units each quarter. And that's a pretty decent load. Um, it would be pretty unreasonable to have someone with a full-time job be able to do this. And that's why you know, these students are basically full-time students. You know, they're full-time students. They, they leave their job. Um, and you know, so you're, you're working pretty hard that whole year. You have a summer break. And that is when you know, we want our students to get out there and get into the market and get some sort of experience, internship, or go back to an old job. Um, to, to gain that additional experience that's going to help them launch off into their next job. Um, the stress with the full-time program is because they've left a job to come to school, there is a little bit more pressure to, to land that job upon graduation. Um, and that's something that, you know, that they're reminded of quite, quite, a, quite a lot that they need to focus on their careers as well. And we do have a wonderful career management center that prepares our students to find the job that they're looking for. Um, our faculty even get engaged with that. They help our students to find sort of their area, help to find the classes. And you know, in the best scenarios, they, they can help and make some introductions as well. So those are the three different programs. As you saw, they all require 92 units. Um, again, they, as you saw, they have all of the same core curriculum. And so you know, what we do here is we offer the same solid STEM designated MBA program, we just offer it at different times to meet the needs of, of our different students. Um, so where's the flex in all of this, right? I talked about this first year where you have no choice and you have to take the classes as they're given to you. Um, and that does not seem flexible and it isn't really flexible, but the flex part comes in, as I mentioned before, when you get to take classes whenever you want after year one. And so the nice thing about this is it may be that you're going to have, you know, you're going to have a rough travel schedule for a quarter um, if you're, let's say, in the flex evening program. And that's difficult to do to tend to come to class twice a week if you're traveling quite a bit. So it may be for that quarter, you take classes on the weekend. Um, likewise, you know, if there's something you're having, you're on the weekend program and you know you're going to have uh, a lot of activity around your house or things going on during the weekend, you might be more apt to join an evening class, or you might just do it because you want to. But all of the students are enabled, can do that. Um, it definitely opens up more options for students to take additional electives and, and you know, be, be a little more creative in how they pursue their studies in their second year. But you know, that's, that's why we do that. That is the flex part. And you know, it also applies to our full-time students as well. Um, talking about some of the financing. Um, so that's a big question I get quite often is how do people pay for the program? Um, it is, you know, like most 
MBA programs in Southern California, it, it is it's an investment, not only in time, but financial investment. What we do at Rady is we evaluate every candidate for a Rady Fellowship. And essentially that's a scholarship. Um, there is nothing that one needs to do in order to be considered. We don't ask for an additional application or additional essay. It is part of our practice because this is what we believe. This is our philosophy. And we wanna help as many people as possible. So that's the, what you see on the bottom, the Rady Merit-Based Fellowship. Qualified candidates will receive assistance in the form of tuition credits every quarter. And um, again, these, you know, we don't do full rides. Um, that's not our philosophy. We believe it's important for our students to have some skin in the game. Um, most of the students that are that that are either not um, military or have uh, um, company funding, they do seek student loans. Um, the, the part about the um, the thing to note about graduate student loans and graduate business student loans is um, you will get what you need. You, you know, there, there's not really a package that you wait for. Essentially, the formula is um, tuition minus any sort of fellowship money that you're receiving. And that remainder is the amount of loan money that you can borrow. Um, and that's a kind of a relief because you're not necessarily waiting for, okay, what am I going to get? How else am I gonna pay for this? Um, so that's kind of how it works. I'm happy to talk to more people about it. Um, if you do the loan process, it is a FAFSA-based process because they are federal loans. The FAFSA is the um, free federal aid uh, application for student funding. Um, if you haven't heard about it, you know, if you just type it in, you're gonna see all sorts of things about it on in our Google searches. Um, another part is UCSD alumni, as well as all UC student alumni, um, are offered a $10,000 fellowship right off the bat. Um, that is immediate. There's nothing you need to do except having graduated from a UC school. And then for those individuals in the military, um, we do really try to take care of our service members. We want to help these people transition and find meaningful work upon their departure of their service. And what we offer is the, the military tuition completion schedule or scholarship, excuse me. And um, essentially, it, it hasn't been completely defined right now, um, but the whole idea is to alleviate any additional burden that one has, um, any additional financial burden that one has if their, their um, let's say their GI Bill runs out. So we do require students to be using their GI Bill to be part of this. But if for whatever reason, um, you know, it, it does not cover all the tuition, the intent is, you know, is for us to help you out and get through school without a huge financial burden. And so if you are, if you are in the military, um, please reach out to me and I can explain that to you a little bit in, in more detail. Um, and then, you know, let's see, was I, did I skip over that? Yes. So now we're gonna talk about the process. And I, I did, my, my colleague and I, Sherry, we led a presentation just, um, just last week about the process, and that can be found. I can send that recording to you if you'd like to know more. This is just an overview, but essentially this is the same for all three programs. Um, the number one thing you wanna do is to schedule an advising session with either myself or my colleague, uh, Sherry, who is the full-time MBA representative at the moment. Um, this That way we can tell you um, very specific pieces of information that are gonna be relevant to you, answer your unique questions, and um, kind of get you started on, on the application if that's what you wanted to do. Um, so that's the first thing you wanna do. And um, if that is the case, you can email me and request one, or you can check out some of the emails I probably sent to you about this presentation and you have an option to schedule your own there. Um, and feel free to email me if you wanna reach Sherry as well. Um, the second component, if you do decide to go ahead and apply, and we, we wish you will, um, we ask for a number, of, you know, a number of components to complete the, your file. Um, basically, we have an online application, which is essentially a lot of demographic information. It isn't particularly hard. It's just you know you just have to answer some some questions and complete some some you know um, drop down menus, things along those lines. So that really is not a brain stretcher. So it's relatively pretty easy. 
we ask for all of your academic transcripts. So um, we are happy to use unofficial copies for our purposes. And most students take advantage of that because usually people have something, you know, in their hard drive or, or if you're my age, it's in some paper format somewhere. Um, we ask for all of them. So that includes any sort of community college work that you took that contributed to your undergraduate degree, even if it was just a summer school class. And if you have any graduate degree work, we want to see those transcripts as well. For in individuals that are coming from schools that are not in the US, we do need to see a degree certification or a diploma. Um, it's very common where the degree is not noted as being conferred on the transcript itself. And so there's an additional, um, you know, additional document to, to um, demonstrate that graduation. So we do ask for that. Again, all of this can be done unofficially. Um, and if, if you do end up being admitted and decide to come to UCSD, the main campus will require official transcripts at that time, but it's not something you need to think about right now. Um, we ask for a resume or a CV. Um, you know, a CV is just a different form um, of a resume for those either in the medical field or the academic field. Um, that is, you know, pretty easy. Most everybody has a resume, particularly if you're looking at business schools. I hope you do. You know, it's easy to upload. We ask for two professional recommendations. And this is not a traditional letter where you actually ask someone to create something from scratch. Um, what happens is when you do, when you're in the online application, there's a section for recommenders and you put their name, title, e and their email address, and they are automatically sent a link. That link will bring that person into your, uh, into a special page, into your portal, and they will be answering direct questions and prompts. So it's much easier for the recommender to complete this than having to start from scratch with a letter. And I advise all students to tell their recommenders this because I think it takes a little of the edge off of the amount of time that they're, they believe they're going to need to, to put aside to do this for you. Um, and you know that helps you because it definitely gets your application complete a little bit faster. The essays, of course, we are going to ask essays because we really want to know who you are. Um, we have uh, two special, we have like basically some required essays and we have an optional essay. Um, there is an essay that asks um, if you, in, the, in the event that you have an issue with your transcript, let's say you didn't do well in a semester or, or your GPA is not very high, we have an option for you to explain that. But essentially we're, we wanna find out if you're a good fit um, for our program and we wanna know who you are. Um, so we have some relatively you know, normal essays, page and a half or so, and then some very short essay responses. And then finally, for the full-time students, we are requiring GMAT or GRE test scores. Um, this is going to be a requirement for the full-time program for the foreseeable future. However, we do not ask for these tests for our FLEX program. Um, and if you want to know all the details why, make an appointment with me and I'll be sure to tell you all about it. Um, but essentially, the application is exactly the same for all three programs other than this test score for the full time. Um, when your file is complete, and that includes those recommendations, we will evaluate you uh, for an interview. And then if, if we do decide to move forward, you'll be invited to interview. Um, that, at that point, your file goes to admissions committee, and that committee will make the decision whether you're nominated to be a Rady student or not. So once that happens and you're moving along, it, you know, basically it's up to you whether you accept um, and come and we're here to help you along the way. So, you know, that is my role. I didn't mention this as an, as an admissions rep. Um, my role is to help you and to be your guide. Um, I am not on the admissions committee, so I don't make those decisions, but, um, and that's, you know, a nice uh, way to avoid a conflict of interest. And that's way I can really help you become and put your best self forward. Um, so when do we want these applications? Okay, so we have some deadlines. Um, I like to think of these as targets um, because we actually review our applications in a rolling basis. And that basically means that even if you submit something, um, let's say if you're a flex student and you submit something on December 2nd, the day after the deadline, we're not gonna wait till the next deadline to start reviewing, you know, reviewing your application. We will look at it as soon as it's complete and that is essentially working on a rolling basis. And so these dates are dates that we want you to shoot for. It's, it's helpful for you 
um, you know, earlier the better. When you when you apply a little bit later on, let's say like the last deadline, it gets a little rushed for everyone involved, including the student. So try to hit these deadlines. Uh, you'll note that um, the April April dates are those for international students. That is the last day that we can accept international applications, just because of the difficult, you know, the the different um, requirements and additional steps that need, need to be taken for the student visa. One thing um, I did want to note, um, actually, is, is for those folks that um, are international, if you do come to a STEM designated program, you are able to use your OPT for three years, not just one year. And that is um, a wonderful opportunity for individuals to continue to work in the United States, continue to be interviewing for you know, a, a long-term position, hopefully be sponsored. And that's another real, that's not only is getting a STEM VA an advantage in terms of you know, your value in the market and also the skill set you obtain, but for international students, it gives you two extra years to stay in the United States. And that's that's a lot. Um, so talking, we chatted a little bit about our fellowships. So we're going to talk more about financing options. Um, again, we have the merit-based Brady Scholarship. That's what I talked about earlier, where you just complete your application. You don't need to do anything special. We evaluate everyone for a fellowship. There is um, some of our students come to us with uh, companies that are willing to sponsor them in some shape. Usually, it's a certain amount per year. Um, that's always a good idea to approach your employer um, if you believe they have any sort of educational benefit. Even and even if they don't, sometimes people will make exceptions for certain candidates. Um, the federal loan is what I mentioned before. Um, that is when you fill out your FAFSA and you you know the formula of tuition minus fellowship equals the amount of aid you'll get or private loans, which of course we all know about. Um, if you want to know more about any of this, um, I mentioned earlier about connecting with us for an advising session. My email is right there, kbcook at ucsd.edu. I work primarily with flex students, but I'm happy to talk to um, full time and I will certainly forward them on to Sherry as well. Sherry, who is the uh, full-time admissions contact right now, and her email address is sherry.who at rady.ucsd.edu, as you can see. Um, and that is your first step if you really want to know more. We did try to cover you know, some basic overall information about our program today, but if you have specific questions that we can't answer in our Q&A or that haven't been answered in the chat, please make an appointment with us. And quite honestly, it, it helps students if you do, because we get to know you. Um, we get, to, we know who you are. You know, we watch you through the process. We know what you're looking for. And, and we have, you know, um, you know, it's a little inf more information that can help you, you know, be successful. So that's always a good idea to get to be friends with someone in the admissions office. Um, so it says we're really nice people and we, you know, all of that. So um, I think if, if, uh, that's kind of the end of my slide. So I guess this is really more about questions that you may have. Um, so I am, Amy, has anything come up in the chat that was not able to be answered yet or that needs my attention? Not yet. Not yet, okay. So let's leave this open, please. If anyone does feel like um, we have a specific question, it's okay if it's specific to you, we have a small group. So if it's something related to you, it may actually be related to some other people too. They may have the same question. Um, and, you know, if you don't have questions or if you feel that you want to address them to us um, separately, certainly sign off as you, as you feel comfortable. Um, we thank you for coming today. And um, again, I will be holding this additional, this exact same presentation at 5.30 tonight. If you missed any part of it, feel free to um, sign in and catch that part. Um, and one final note, um, by attending this presentation, um, we will waive your application fee of $200. So that we, we definitely took um, kind of attendance, we know who came, but please let us know anyway when you apply, when you submit that application or you start your application, either one, send myself or Sherry an email and just remind us so we can go ahead and clear your application fee for you. So that's 
you know, another benefit of coming to one of these. You get information, you get to listen to my soliloquy, and, and you don't have to pay $200. So doesn't look like anyone has questions. Anyone? OK. Well, I'm going to hang out here for a while. For those of you that do, please feel free to ask or you know answer something in. Oh, OK. So from those coming from scientific background, what are the most important factors? OK. That's a good question. Um, so we do actually have quite a few students with scientific background, um, and they're really very good fits for the RADI program, um, as you probably gathered throughout the presentation. Um, the first thing that we, we want to know is, you know, if you're looking at the FLEX program, we're very interested in your work experience. And so we want to understand, you know, the progression of your career. And so starting from when you graduated, whether it was from your undergrad or your graduate, your graduate degree, we want to understand um, you know, where you've worked and sort of what those roles were. And ideally, sort of a progression um, of, of you know, what you've been doing and, and to date. Um, we're also interested in your education. Um, you know, they, everything has a, a factor in the decision process. Um, but you know, for scientific background, um, you know, and if you're coming from academia, that's awesome. Um, we want to understand what you've been doing, what you've been researching, and what you've been teaching, if that's what you what you're doing. Um, hopefully, that helps. Um, we, you know, if it, like I said, sometimes people with a scientific background have a CV, and that's a lot easier, you know, way to demonstrate your research and any sort of publishing that you have because it's quite a bit longer. But you know, flex programs, we really want to know what your work experience is. Full time, because we require only two years of experience for admittance as, as a requirement, um, folks don't generally have as much as, say, the folks in the flex e evening or the flex weekend program. Um, and so we pay a little bit more attention to your um, education, your GPA, things like that. But either way, we want to understand both for all candidates. And I think Amy talked about. Um, the, the rolling, like when we'll actually start reviewing applications. Um, oh yes, I'm sorry. We do not have a spring start. Um, that would be craziness here. Um, we do have the fall start fun. Um, you know, it does enable you to really become close with your colleagues and your classmates. And um, you know, you have the liberty and the time without a whole new influx of students to, to get to know those other colleagues that are in the other programs. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, sounds like people need to sign off. So I'll wait a few more minutes if you have any questions. Um, and we do have a question. Um, and uh, if not, we can chat next time or you can contact me. I did just read a question about the December 1st deadline. So the start date for class, I think that's what you're talking about, is in September. Um, I think Amy mentioned this, all of our classes begin in the fall. If you're talking about when we actually begin to review your, your application, um, we will review your application as soon as it's complete. 